Uh, I'm Mike White, this is Dr. B.J. Jane, uh, former surgeon, uh, 2,000 surgeries, and he came to me to uh, address a condition that he's had with his breathing for some time that modern science has said that uh, you can't do anything about. Uh, being relentless as he is, he decided to uh, scrutinize that uh, issue and see what he could get done. So. We've uh, so far added about 17% to his breathing volume, and we'll let him uh, share the rest. Hi, my name is Vijay Jain. Uh, I've practiced general surgery for 40 years, and in the last 20 years I've been practicing integrative medicine, in, including the modern medicine with Eastern systems of medicine called Ayurveda. Uh, my interest uh, in this particular visit was to see if I can increase my lung volume and my breathing. Uh, I had a, uh, a uh, autoimmune disease about 30 years ago where uh, the muscles of my diaphragm, the uh, upper girdle and lower girdle were uh, inflamed. The condition is called polymyositis, which got better with uh, uh, treatments uh, both in modern medicine as well as in Ayurveda. Actually, Ayurveda is what actually cured the disease, and I was doing well since 2002 when um, I started my practice of surgery again. Now, last year, I started noticing that I'm getting short of breath and I went to the pulmonologist uh, who uh, diagnosed that my diaphragm is partially in, uh, inresponsive or unresponsive and therefore it has gone up into the chest decreasing the lung volume uh, so the diaphragm is not moving properly and that was the reason why I contacted Mike White whom I met uh, at Amrit Yoga Institute in Florida. Uh, since I've been here, uh, I've learned the mechanics of breathing, uh, learned about what normal breathing is and how we can improve on that normal breathing by paying attention to the mechanics of breathing. Uh, the word uh, he uses is breath coordination, to learn when to exhale and when to inhale. So one of the biggest things I learned is that you exhale whenever you are doing an exertion and inhale while you are resting or you are doing a passive movement. So active movement requires exhalation and that alone helped me understand the mechanics of breathing. Also most of my breathing was erratic. It was not uh, where it should be. Uh, the, uh, what I understand now is that I need to make that balloon in which the air goes in to be bigger so that I can have bigger volume and I can feel uh, less short of breath on doing exertion. So those are the things which I've learned and as Mike said that uh, I've improved about 17 percent in the last three days which is a great improvement by any standard and I want to continue working on it so that I can improve and get back to normal uh, for me uh, so that I can do my normal activities. We went ahead him from quote normal to optimal. Uh, the word normal kind of worries me a little bit. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a lot of quote normal people out there that have been uh, that they don't look too normal to me. Uh, in terms of breathing, the expectations for breathing is way down from where it should be. So there's a lot of pulmonologists that are very happy with certain breathing volumes uh, and forced escalation volumes. And uh, they're very happy because uh, uh, they don't know any better to uh, look for more. And so we, we do. That's what optimal breathing does. It goes for the maximum amount of breathing that you can get because there's a direct relationship between the breathing volume and between uh, how long you're going to live.
and uh, that's been proven several times. So there's uh, uh, there's good there's good uh, uh, statistics and clinical studies behind that. So uh, it's been a joy to have uh, Dr. Jane around, and we just have so much in common. Uh, he's so worldly. He's done so many wonderful things, and uh, uh, it was great to get a, a good chunk of his wisdom and uh, I'm trying to help him breathe a little better and I think he's pretty happy with that. Yeah, and I think that is the important thing that make this optimal breathing so that uh, I can achieve the optimum volume I can achieve with my constitution, with my body. I feel more energized than when I was, when I came. So I feel more energy and that is because of more uh, oxygen going into my body, okay. into my cells. Okay. And breath is an important aspect of living, of course everyone knows that, but we all know that it is physical, physically important to have oxygen into our cells because that is what creates the uh, nutrients into energy. So oxygen is required for that conversion. Now if oxygen is not sufficient, if our tissues are not getting enough oxygen, then that process is not properly uh, taking place and that causes low energy. So that is one aspect of breathing. But I feel breathing is more important than just physical because we just don't have physical existence. We have uh, energetic existence, we have uh, mental existence, we have spiritual ex existence. And breath is the common thread which combines all of our existences together. So we have to take breath as a very important aspect of living. Well, I think uh, this is a uh, very important he brings in some some of the very important aspects to it one of them is that teaching even everyone how to breathe properly how to breathe optimally that is good for everyone but people who have difficulty in breathing they have chronic lung disease or chronic any disease chronic painful conditions our breathing becomes affected by that so I would say that breathing is essential for everyone. Mm -hmm. So anybody who has got a chronic disease should learn how to breathe optimally. And if they want to live a long life, then they should also learn how to breathe. A lot of people think they breathe well. And uh, if they want to take our breathing test, we've had uh, tens of thousands of people take a breathing test. And so we have a lot of uh, insight around uh, uh, what's good breathing, what isn't. How do you measure it? You know, the, one of the best ways of managing something is to measure it. And so we've learned how to measure breathing, but simply, you don't have to go spend $2,000 on an MRI to see if your breathing's getting better or worse on a day-to-day -day basis. So one of the really uh, wise things to do is just check your breathing once a day, once a week, once a month, and do some simple tests that we have and see how things have changed. You know, you can begin to monitor your progress or digress and then act accordingly. And that is one of the things which I like that I'm leaving here with some tools. That tools I can use on a daily basis to see my progress, how I'm advancing or not advancing. So I can connect with Mike and say, well, I'm stuck here. And then he can help me. So I've got some tools which I'm taking with me, which will help me uh, keep this uh, moving in a positive direction. We, one of the things that we went over while he was here was uh, specific exercises from the Optimal Breathing Kit and uh, uh, trained him to make sure that everything was blue perfect and we can always Skype uh, if we want to double check down the line because there's quite a few of them and to uh, encourage him to make so there's, we had some specific uh, guidelines around uh, how to work out and uh, what not to do and what to do in terms of breathing and relationship to exertion, uh, which, he, which he alluded to in the beginning. So uh, the breathing kit is really uh, uh, designed to be a self-contained unit. It's not supposed to need me necessarily, but hey, 
there are different people with different breathing issues and so you can progress a lot quicker quite often if you get me on a Skype or you come here to visit like the doctor did.